Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency adoption sweeping the planet, folks, like wildfire, especially in places that have been left out of watching just other developed nations not only get larger, but more dominant in the global economy. Let's face it, people want a chance to have the same level of prosperity that most Americans have enjoyed for decades, and I think now we take it for granted. Unfortunately, there is still slight, uh, maybe too much, significant government and establishment opposition. Joining me now, the American Blockchain PAC CEO, Adele Nazarian. And Adele, you know, I love a piece that you wrote about blockchain explaining how it's a natural fit for America and could really never work in China. Tell us about that. Charles, great to be on with you again. Thank you. Absolutely. The Sornetta, who we are honored to have chairing the American Blockchain PAC Board of Advisors, was really created for decentralization. And China, converse to that, is all about central, centralized power and control. In fact, Xi Jinping, who is um, leading China right now, he made in a recent speech commentary saying that China will dominate the heights of blockchain because he knows how important and critical it is to the future. But that's exactly why the American blockchain pack was founded by Todd White and is being led by him and myself to ensure that that doesn't happen and that there is sound regulation so that Americans right. can continue to prosper. But, but I, what really struck me, though, is the, the notion of, of decentralization, right? Central governments, uh, you know, uh, you know, and listen, here's the thing. A lot of people are wondering, how does America stay on top? Uh, empires usually come and go. We superseded uh, Great Britain. We've, we've gone further than many of these other prior empires have. Of course, it's, 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 being a republic, a democratic republic helps a lot. But this notion that maybe we should be embracing, embracing Bitcoin, embracing blockchain, embracing the DeFi revolution, instead of states like New York making it harder to mine uh, crypto, instead of the Federal Reserve always saying it's only used for you know, for criminal activity. Shouldn't we be embracing it? Should, isn't that part of our ethos? Absolutely. And that's where it comes, it comes in the notion of liberty, having the ability to... The blockchain and the distributed ledger technology are tools with which we can build prosperity. And I'm glad that you brought up the issue with New York, actually. Um, there, the bill stands to be either vetoed or, or signed into law by um, Kathy Hochul. And I think that it would be a mistake and truly a, a grave injustice to to ban Bitcoin mining when it's such an incredible tool for wealth generation and creation, yeah. especially when on the verge of a recession. It's just absolutely nuts. I, I'm going to leave it there. I'm running out of time, Adele. But keep up the good work. You know, I, I really love the parallels, and, and it is part of our ethos. And, you know, there's a lot of people in this country that want to bite at the economic apple, and maybe that's the way to go. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. All right, folks, listen, it's been tough sledding all week, uh, you know, particularly with these growth names. Again, they're getting clobbered today. And I know it's very frustrating. Uh, but my next guest says just... You know, maybe kind of be cool because there are ways you can actually make this work for you. I want to bring in Rob Luna. And Rob, first and foremost, what, what makes the market moving lower, you know, more frustrating, I think, is when, when you know, there's good news, right? <laughs> yeah. Today, yeah. like yesterday, last night, a bunch of companies reported the stocks are up 5%, 10%. And as the day goes on, they get clobbered, they go down anyway. CrowdStrike, for instance, right? I know that's the name that you like. How do you stay cool when you see good news in a company, the stock initially goes up, and then the next day it's down? Well, I mean, just like you, Charles, I've been doing this for a long time, and unfortunately, we're, we're in a bear market. I mean, the S&P, maybe not technically the NASDAQ, which includes names like CrowdStrike, has been in it for quite a while. And like you know, a bear market's tough because it's death by a thousand cuts. And I think that's eventually how bear markets end. It's, it's capitulation after people just finally say, this is never going to turn around. It's not going to get any better. You see a name like CrowdStrike came out, beat on top line, bottom line, had a good day running into earnings yet, but gave all that back today. That's what gets to investors over a long period of time. The worst thing, though, Charles, I've been doing this for 24 years. I remember March of 09. That's when you start to see the biggest capitulation towards the bottom. And we do see days like yesterday when things do rebound. I know they rebound quickly. I'm not smart enough. I've never met anyone who could be all in or all out of this market. So you need to stick with the names you have conviction in, keep some dry powder. But this is just part of the game, Charles. Yeah. And, and by the way, I'll remind folks that Warren Buffett accumulated $140 billion over 10 years, and he's already put $50 billion to work this year. You know, a couple of days right. ago, you actually tweeted out uh, the market is starting to, to just feel a little different here. You said it's still a bear yeah. market, but 
All that changes uh, start with human behavior. Uh, first, AKA FOMO. What exactly did yeah. you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, what you're starting to see, Charles, is companies that are coming out. I mean, we, we saw it even with Microsoft yesterday. The challenge is they didn't re they came out, they uh, pre-reported bad negative earnings. The stock actually rallied. We're starting to see a little bit more about that. What's giving me a little bit of conviction and some hope is if you look at the one month chart, even though we've been chopping around here, it's actually a bottoming for formation that we're putting in. So we haven't hit some new lows. I do believe we're at some critical points right here. Everybody's focused on the Fed. They're going to dictate what's going on. We get some of the inflation numbers coming out a little bit lighter. Stocks mm -hmm. rally. But I do think, Charles, this is a point in time where you need to start taking a little bit more risk in your portfolio. You know, uh, by the way, I, I do. I think that next CPI report, I think it's on June 10th. If that thing is yep. anywhere below what they think, that might be the spark. Hey, real quick, Absolutely. I know you're longer term looking, but these short squeezes can be delicious when they start to happen. Are you looking at anything, any of these names? And you talked about how much stocks went up yesterday. We saw names up 10, 15, 20 percent yesterday alone. Are you making any lists for those kind of potential trading opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you see those big days, you want to go into those high beta names. And if you take a look at short interest, I like sticking with your previous guest, that Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency theme, a great way to play that high beta. Two names, Coinbase and MicroStrategies, 20 percent, almost 40 percent short interest. I know you've had Michael Saylor on your show before. I think that's a great name when you see Bitcoin bottoming here around 30K. That ticks up. The market ticks up. You can get a great ride on those two stocks. Yeah, I know. If, if, if Bitcoin went back to, let's say, if Bitcoin went to, let's say, uh, 50,000 or something like that, I think no. those stocks would double. I know MicroStrategies probably would be up at least 50% or more. Rob, thanks a lot, man. Always appreciate your wisdom, my friend. Thanks, Charles.